happen, I'm going to introduce Enrique Alvelais, who is going to be the speaker tonight. And his bio says, Cluster Biomedtech Director, CEO Global Business Solutions Network, LLC, founder of Employee Relations Training Center. And Enrique is an industrial engineer graduated of Chihuahua Institute of Technology with an MBA from Monterrey Institute of Technology. 40 years of experience in employee relations, human resources, EHS, operational excellence, shelter in operations working for USA, Sweden, Brazil, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, Colombia, and Chile. He served as a director of Chihuahua Manufacturing Experts, Exports, Exporters, excuse me, Association and Ciudad Juarez Economic Development, and has been part of the board of directors in FECHAC, Index Juarez, and Chihuahua Forest Association. How about that, Enrique? It's a lot, 40 years. Okay, well, thank you so much to everybody. Uh, just as a, as, a, as a brief introduction, as uh, Orfil mentioned, I spent uh, close to 42 years in the industry. My last 16 years was with Cardinal Health. I had the privilege to work with uh, my vecino Orfil, who was my neighborhood, my neighbor in my office. So, so we call each other vecino. And um, I, I, retired of the industry back in 2018 and decided to start uh, global business solutions network which which is my my company uh, as part of a personal plan uh, the idea is to be 10 years in the consulting uh, uh, area and then go to the golf course afterwards um, so uh, Last, last year, I was contacted by a group of directors who is the governance committee, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the governance committee of the Biomedtech cluster. And basically, uh, they had a request for proposal process in order to find out a consultant that uh, helped me to uh, activate uh, this cluster in the El Paso Juarez area. Uh, uh, before I move forward, uh, um, let me give you a, a little bit of, of, of background. Uh, to start a cluster, this is my second experience. I had the opportunity to, to facilitate the aerospace uh, cluster early in the 2000s in Chihuahua City. So this is the, the second experience uh, trying to put together the elements of, of a cluster. Um, any of you has been involved in in a cluster have, have you ever experienced uh, the that your company is participating in a cluster that you can share with the group what do you use to do what do you learn in the cluster a any of you have been in a in a in a cluster before no okay uh in in in, in Chihuahua State, jo, just to, to put this in perspective, in, in Chihuahua State, we became the, the number 13 cluster in Chihuahua State, number 13. Um, so uh, one of the things that I do from the external part of view of the strategic planning process was to understand the clusters that we have in Chihuahua State and, and to see how to link the operation of the biomedtech cluster within it because at the end this is an ecosystem um, and uh, it was a big surprise for me that as a part of an economic develop initiative uh, what the government is trying to do is to organize uh, to organize everything through clusters uh, we have uh, i'm going to mention to you the, the different clusters that we have in, in chihuahua state to say um, um, advanced manufacturing cluster, automotive cluster, aerospace cluster, energy, forest, agricultural, mining, 
emerging global entrepreneurs, biomed tech between others. So that was the first, the one of the first uh, initiatives that I said, okay, let's understand what's happening with the clusters. Um, the second one, there is an organization in Germany and maybe ASQ can, can take a look on it, um, but this organization certifies how does the cluster works. So uh, they basically uh, give you the tools to say, if you, can, if you want to be an effective cluster, uh, you need to follow this, this, and, and this. It's, it's like an ISO 9000 certification, but it's very interesting to understand that from a global point of view, there is an organization in Germany that provides the tools that uh, help you to, to, to start a cluster. And last but not least, uh, at the end, uh, I all, also try to understand what were uh, good clusters in Mexico, talking about Mexico as a country. And uh, I found uh, some of them, like the automotive cluster in uh, Guanajuato. They are growing a lot in the area of Guanaj Guanajuato, which is central area. Uh, there is a food cluster in Jalisco, which has been very success. Um, there is a green energies cluster in Oaxaca. And I also found that uh, Bahamed cluster in Tijuana, that uh, Orfield knows about them. Bahamed cluster is considered a cluster that is working efficiently. So. I try to update myself with these three parameters to say, okay, here we go, and let's let's facilitate what you you will see uh, in this strategic planning process. Um, next one, please. So, when when you talk when you talk about a, a cluster, it's like a puzzle where you need to understand what are going to be the pieces that you want to put together. So, what are the needs? that the persons or the companies that are going to participate in the cluster, what are the main needs that they have because they, they will become common needs for the cluster. And the cluster needs to work on identify that needs, but at the same time provide common solutions to common problems that, that these people that is together in a cluster have. So, I truly believe in this inspirational part of it. Uh, there's people that uh, doesn't like to talk a lot about inspirational things, but, uh, but I think that at the end, it, it gives you a direction when you're talking with 25 different companies trying to put together a common statement, it's not easy. So basically this is a, a, what we, that the group decided to say, okay, we strive to build a dynamic and visionary ecosystem that enhances the competitiveness and attractiveness of the sector. At the end, at the end, um, I, I think that there is a lot of, of, of cost pressure right now in the industry and, and bottom line, as a cluster, you need to provide some initiatives that help them to be more competitive. Um, the talent piece, we stand out because of an unwavering commitment to improving the capabilities and skills of workers because we know they are the constant that drives innovation, the cornerstone. Um, I, I think that you will see during the presentation, uh, talent is today more than ever. And, 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 I, and I think that I, I, I leave challenges while I was in the industry, but uh, I can see that right now the the companies struggle a lot to 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 get some special special engineers that we're gonna talk about. So we wanted to to set that this piece of talent is gonna be important in the cluster. And uh, last of not least, our inspirations translated into business creation by charting a path to strengthen local supply and becoming the cutting edge in the sector. Um, in in Chihuahua State, we have a, a huge, huge challenge. If if you take a look to the 
millions of dollars that the maquiladora industry utilizes here in the border, it's very sad to say that no more than 3% is, is coming from, re, from the region when you talk about raw material. If you see Nuevo León as a state, if you see Nuevo León, Nuevo León provides close to 60% from local suppliers to the foreign companies doing business in Nuevo León. So we decided that to work with the local suppliers was going to be a challenge for the cluster. And, and we wanted to set that in the inspiration, inspiration piece. Next one, Jack, please. And then here comes the, the vision and, and, and the mission. Um, what I always try to, to, to say and to facilitate is that the mission is going to be the areas of focus that we need to keep. Everybody in the cluster needs to keep in mind. Um, so when we review the, the mission, uh, there were three, three topics that came very easy uh, that that mission was kind of easy to 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 write down um first one again was talent development uh second one the adoption of cutting edge technology and the third the third one is um how are we going to impact in terms of innovation in production processes and product design these were the, the three elements uh, that were defined in, in the mission. Next one, please. So from here, we, we jump to, to the areas of focus. I'm going to give you uh, some examples if we can go to through the next one, uh, Jack. So when, when we talk about talent, um, what we start doing is number one start talking to the academy uh, it, it's critical in a cluster to include the academy in 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 your ecosystem so first one we needed to understand what was uh, the state of chihuahua offering in terms of my of my biomed and we start talking to 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 the universities uh, the second one was to work with the companies interested in the cluster to identify a, a matrix of skills, knowledge, and competences of critical positions. Uh, so we as a cluster uh, have clear what are going to be the areas of focus. Uh, uh, and to give you an example, plastics engineer seems to be like an industrial engineer or electromechanical electromechanical engineer but but it is not if you really want an specialized uh, engineer with more than five years of experience in the area of plastics it's not easy to find in the area so so we started working uh, trying to identify this kind of 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 uh, specialized position the other one is is dye and casting engineer believe me or not packaging engineer is becoming uh, uh, an important position because packaging is is starting to to play a, a, a critical role uh, a critical role in the cost of the product so packaging engineer was identified also as a critical position and and basically that's where we are working the third one area in the talent uh, uh, area of focus uh, is the education piece. Um, I'm a product of education because I was working in the industry since I was in, in middle school and I consider myself a, a product of training and I truly believe in training. That's why I decided to create a center of formation uh, in, in Juarez City, which is a very success center. Uh, we have been working with this center for years and a half, trying to understand what are the needs of the industry and provide that type of training. Um, Orfield had the opportunity to help us in our first masterclass. 
Uh, we had this first masterclass in, back in October, and, and basically what is it about is that we organize uh, some group focus and, and like 30 companies tell us what were their needs. They became with regulation and update on regulation in both United States and Mexico sites with the FDA and with Cofepris. Uh, we became with um, microbiology uh, to talk about clean rooms, clean rooms, clinical trails, clinical labs. Uh, Orfil helped us with the third one in relation with quality trends. Um, there were a lot of questions that you saw in the survey, uh, Orfil. A, a lot of follow-up that we need to do with with uh, with with quality. And the last but not least was innovation and technology. So the talent committee of this cluster organized the organized the 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 masterclass and we had like 32 companies um in in this masterclass so the area of focus right now is academy is to to identify the critical roles that we have in the biomed uh, uh, area and the the education where can we impact as a cluster with education any questions up to this point Okay, let's jump to the second one, which, which uh, remember. Uh, okay, um, this this second area of focus remember me uh, my experience with operational excellence, and, and and at that time I don't know if you may recall or feel when uh, operational excellence started at Cardinal Health. They saw HR in Latin America to to start the initiative of operational excellence. Why? Because culture. Remember. Because culture. Uh, they ask human resources to start operational excellence because culture. It was a project of three years. We going, we were going to develop our black belts. From there, we were going to develop our master black belts, and from there, we're going to have our first director of operational excellence. And a lot of things that happen in operational excellence in the company is related with this, with this uh, initiative within the cluster. Um, so what, what we decided to do is to invite the black belts of the different medical device companies to get together, they start talking and they start identifying kind of common projects in the warehouse or common projects in automation. And, and they found out through this committee that there was a good opportunity uh, to, to bring common solutions to common problems that they have in the industry. So this is what this uh, 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 committee is about. The, the other thing that we are doing in this committee, um, there is a company, it's a small company that is developing a new product. They want to see both United States and Mexico market. Uh, huge, huge via cruises to identify what they need to do to get the patents. But what the cluster is doing is to document everything since we started helping this company because we found out that with a good documentation providing a service of the cluster, when a second kind of common need comes to the cluster, you have already a documentation and you can provide a, a quick service to this second company. So this is what... Uh, uh this uh, uh, committee is working right now next one jack and last but not least uh to capture technology uh to to bring to the region what do we have in terms of robotics what do we have in terms of automation um 
you saw Orfield during our master class, we had the opportunity to present a CEO of a company. He was 23 years old when he started Mechatronics and has been very, very, very success uh, entrepreneur here in the region. Uh, he's leading, he's leading this, this uh, uh, committee. Uh, we recently, last week, it was last week, we have the visit of a very important company based in Canada. Uh, they develop the equipment and machinery for medical device companies. So we bring some uh, actors of the area um, which they really value, uh, that they, they see them as a partner that will help them to bring their operation into, into the region. So this, this last uh, area of focus is, is related with technology. Okay, um, the next one, please. Next one. So these are the, the three areas of focus that I mentioned. This is the what. Now it comes the how. If you can go to the next one, Jack. So the, this is the, the strategy. Um, the first one is related with, with the supply chain of the cluster. So we started an analysis from raw materials, processes, packaging, uh, sterilization. So we, we're trying to understand each of the steps of, of the supply chain of the, of the industry and, and try to identify uh, common solutions. And I'm going to give some examples uh, uh, later. Local supply, I already mentioned to you the, the huge challenge that we have with uh, two or three percent of the local suppliers providing to the maquiladora industry in Juarez and Chihuahua State, the, the raw materials that they need. Uh, so we're trying to understand this world because it's, it's, it's very challenging um, in order to increase this number. We want to increase this to 5% in the next three years. The other one is related with invention and innovation. This is the part related with patents, um, which, is, which is very important for, for the companies. And, and last but not least, uh, business attraction, um, something that uh, that we decided as a cluster since the beginning is that we are not economic development promoters. There are government and private agencies that are fully dedicated to bring foreign companies into Mexico. What we want to do is to work with, with, the, with, the, with the current ones. Um, uh, in other words, to, to try to understand what the current companies doing business in Chihuahua and El Paso and need, and how can we bring the, the different players uh, to help them. So these are four different committees as well. And, and last but not least, we have the, the principles of, of the cluster. We, want, we, don't, we don't want to be, as we say in Mexico, El Club de Toby. We don't want to be um, a cluster with members that we won't provide value added to the to the cluster. So we 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 make kind of a internal procedure to say who must be our collaborative alliances. Of course, the academy is welcome. The the U.S., uh, Canada, Canada and China embassies are already working with us in different initiatives. Um, federal, state, and local government agencies welcome an organization like ASQ welcome because we can look for synergies between your organization and the cluster between others. Um, the, the other one is it's a committee that is uh, it's focused on economic sustainability of the cluster um we need to go out and 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 look for funds for the cluster 
our memberships are very cheap. Uh, so, so really, we really need to look for uh, other type of funds. So we have a committee working on this. And last but not least, the, the social responsibility piece uh, of, of the business that are part of the cluster to say ethics code, environmental between others. So this is in one page, uh, all the operation that we review in a monthly basis, first Wednesday of every month. Um, basically, this is what we are working. Uh, if we go to the next one, Jack, we're going to go in a little bit more of, of detail to, to share with you uh, what are specific projects that we have in front of us. Next one, please. Always in a cluster, it's it's very, very important to understand what, who are you? What do you have? Um, what type of raw materials do you use? What type of industry capabilities do you have? So we are developing a, a study because we're mapping the area of El Paso. We're mapping the area of Juarez to understand what are the current needs? Um, it's very clear. If you see this geographical location, it's very clear that Juarez is manufacturing, clear, and that El Paso Las Cruces is research and development, is logistics, is clinical trails, is metrology between others. So this is the complement in the borderplex area. Next one. These are the, 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 the um, projects that I already mentioned with the, with the ma matrix. We are also developing a uh, mentoring initiative to help uh, young engineers to grow and also uh, to utilize the expertise in group synergies uh, when you are going to bring, let's say, an Italian equipment or if you're going to bring a German equipment to try to understand who in the cluster know about this type of machinery and start developing local engineers uh, so you don't need to bring experts from outside. Next one, Jack. Um, another area that we are working, especially with the government, is sterilization. 90% of the companies utilize ETO. Uh, we have two companies in the border, Sterigenix and Steris, um, providing this uh, service. And um, th there is kind of a bottleneck uh, in, in the industry right now. In, in the supply chain, they lose, they lose like seven weeks with the boxes there because there is a bottleneck in, in, in the supplier. So we're starting to understand other technologies like eBeam. Uh, we brought a company, uh, they, they, their name is Avanti. Uh, so Avanti is trying to educate the industry in relation to this new uh, type of uh, sterilization. Um, uh, only we have one company that decided to to go to test certain products about this new technology, but it is clear for us that the sterilization is a is a challenge in, in terms of infrastructure. Uh, we are working also in uh, clean rooms, capabilities, lab trails, and a huge problem that we had in Mexico. Uh, summer is over. But right now we are like uh, other countries like Dominican Republic or Cuba, where we usually have electrical cuts in the industry and it is very, very expensive. So we're trying to understand not only to work with the federal government about the, the suministry of electrical energy, but, but what type of equipment can we have to save electrical energy in the, in the facilities? 
we're talking about also about what they call granjas ambientales, which is a, an environmental project uh, to try to create uh, energy through solar panels. So this is my last uh, part of, uh, of my presentation. Basically, it's a, a graph, if you can move forward, um, Jack, uh, that put together uh, the, the areas of uh, focus where we're, we're basically uh, trying to be sure that uh, <laughs> we focus on, on these three areas. And um, basically, that's, that's the presentation of the cluster. I don't know if you have any questions, um, if you would be interested to facilitate a training masterclass, more than welcome. Uh, I'm working with Orfield about our second masterclass right now, related with Six Sigma. One question. Yes. Uh, when you're talking about talent development, you're talking about uh, hiring people and then develop them? No. No? No. Uh, we're talking more about uh, identify the needs through this training matrix. I mean, it's, it's a matrix that uh, just imagine the, the different positions, plastics engineer, dye and casting engineer, packaging engineer. So it's a matrix where we say, okay, what are the competencies? What are the knowledge? What are the skills that they need to know to have? And then work with the academy or with the masterclass uh, training of the cluster and, and provide the, the education. So it's more education. Okay. Because uh, I, I heard that HR is looking for talent most of the time to hire. Yes, Hector, and I, I mentioned that that uh, that uh, it's it's difficult to understand. But in Juarez, to to bring a specialized engineers, you need to go to Durango, you need to go to Agua Prieta, you need to go to to Querétaro, to Guanajuato to try to bring people from there. That's why we're working with the academy. There, there is a gap there. Uh, but no, it, that there is a need, there is a need. I, I guess I'm trying to understand when you say, like, for example, with this talent development, working with the academy, what, what does that mean? I mean, like, if they don't have a program to develop people today, Right. I mean, they need money for for starting new degrees, or, or maybe even then modifying. What is what is the cluster bringing to that? Is it saying, "Hey, we got this need. You guys can fill it," or do you guys show up and say, "Well, we have this need, and we'll help you in some fashion to have the resources so that you can provide it." It's basically um, to provide to the academy very specific examples of an engineer that I received in my facility. And, and 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 say okay to to bring this engineer from level level zero to level one level one I needed to get to to give this specific training. You need to bring this to the academy so they review their their program to say why do I, do I spend one year on this basic training where in theory they must bring it from the university. Is that communication related with their programs? So, so, okay. So uh, what I'm trying to understand here is you guys just go and tell them, Hey, you're not delivering what we want. You guys go fix it. So you're not, you're not saying like, Hey, we're going to come in here and we're going to provide, you know, some kind of resource or something to help make this actually happen. There, there, are, there, are, there are companies that are very committed with that, Keith. Uh, it's a good comment. Uh, it's not the cluster directly, are the companies directly. Um, with labs, like an example, when they invest in, in certain labs uh, where, where engineers from, from, from the facilities go to the school to give certain topics, so we can align the reality with the academy. 
it, it's it's both uh but i need to recognize that this is with the help of the of the companies directly johnson and johnson cardinal cordis are, are always willing to 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 help uh, the the academy including with resources for labs and things like that okay okay So, Anton, uh, Enrique, I'm sorry, I have a question. So, what stops me if I'm the company that's best in class and I actually want to acquire the best talent out there, you know, stuff like that? Why would I want to do this if I'm, you know, uh, my competitor might benefit from it and therefore I might lose business as a result of that? Can you repeat the question? Hey, if I'm the best in class, I'm, I'm the top of the chain in on these companies, okay? Mm -hmm. And I joined this cluster, and now some of the companies that are do not have the talent development that I developed already, the process and design, the technology, I, I realize it's good to share it, but if I share it with the competition, why would I want to do that if I'm the, at the top of the chain? I understand if I'm at the bottom of it, it makes a lot of sense. You know, I'm very interested. But if I'm on top, isn't that going to hurt my business on the long run with the competitors? Yeah, and 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 let me let me maybe talk about Johnson and Johnson, uh, which is for me a a, a company with a, with a, a good talent development program. Um, it, it depends a lot on the leadership, to be honest with you, and 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 the commitment that you have with the region. Uh, just to say, we we need to stop bringing uh, engineers from outside, which is there. There is a cost there. It's not easy. It's it's a good question, eh? Because that's where in not only in talent development in, in in the black belt projects in, in the product design uh, initiatives it is when you ask yourself well why do i need to be in a cluster if i i, I i'm success i can tell you it it it's a lot of um believe in the region believe in the people that you want to develop more than to 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 see how are you doing as a company and uh, we have the most important companies in the cluster um that are willing to do so uh, yeah but you know again bottom line all the time it's money and the companies are in it to make money if i'm gonna develop other companies what with this cluster help them out you know stuff like that and i'm going to lose as a result of that to the competition you know i don't see why i would be interested in this now if i'm below it i totally understand it you know it makes perfect sense in fact i mean i used to work at dish network for the longest time we used to recruit i don't know if they still do but they used to recruit young engineers coming out of the universities you know for the longest time i always wondered you know hey you know they come and get and that happens with a lot of companies they come and get their experience, they get the tools, and then after a while, you know, after they got the experience, somebody else noticed that talent by belonging to different networks, uh, professional organizations like this one, engineering organizations, other organizations, uh, other societies, you know, and they, they're they looking for this, you know, indirectly, you know, there is a cluster, you know, without nobody, you know, paying membership uh, dues and stuff like that. And and therefore, you know, somebody else starts stealing that talent because now I'm going to make you a, a better job offer. And, and and I get exactly what you're talking about. El Paso has the same problem most of the time. The University of Texas El Paso developed some of the best engineers in the state of Texas, you know, and uh, they get their feet wet here. And as soon as other companies find out, you know, hey, this other company did the training, they have very good tools for training. Now I'm gonna offer these guys a better uh, paying job, you know, and not when I'm talking about the competition, you know, it's like, it's 
it's rough up there, you know, it's like, it's hard to compete when, when they're going to pay him a lot more money, you know, and it's always like, okay, I got to start all over again. But so the question was that, you know, what incentive does it have the company that's at the top of the chain? What's in it for them? You know, at the end, if they lose money, you know, why would I want to join a cluster? I, I got what you said. Benefiting the region, I got what you said. Stopping having to get food from another state and stuff like that. But once you get to that point, you know what stops me from? I, I think it's. I don't know if anybody can correct me here, but you start cannibalizing yourself. You know, I joined this, and now it's hurting my business. No, no, and and, and I understand the risk. Um, to to be honest, you you are making making me think about it. We had 17 months working on this cluster. We started back in June. Um, th through the talent committee, we hadn't had any concern or, um, you know, discussion of what you're saying. Now, let me tell you something. I don't know if you're familiar, but uh, what is, went down 30,000 employees in the last 12 months, which is close to 13% yes. because different factors, different factors. So maybe we are going to leave that concern when we start warming up again. Um, but, but to be honest, uh, I, I haven't had a concern at this point. Um, and, and people is participating, providing the information. Uh, now, when I when I say providing the information, it's it's this it's this. Uh, what do you need? It's you're not talking about people. You are not exposing people. Uh, Orfield in the master class, we had people from different companies. Maybe they meet between each other. Uh, we have three managers there. If you may recall, we have three managers in that master class. That's where this risk could happen because they interact a lot during the breaks. But uh, I, I, I haven't seen that. I mean, I, I can see a lot of communication uh, between the companies through the cluster, but I haven't seen that. Um, so, Enrique, the bottom line is, uh, how much resistance have you? Have you noted between the medical device companies in Juarez that resist to benchmark? Well, low, I will say low. I think they, they are sharing their uh, basic needs at, at very top level. Because in the meetings, I, I don't have managers. I have the, the VPs. I have the directors. I have the, 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 the person that takes decision in the, in, the, in the company that they work for. So they, they try to identify where they having problems and, they, and then they say, okay, Enrique, let's put together these six guys from these three companies to talk about this specific uh, topic. One but the cluster, the cluster is not knocking the door um, to try to get that information. That information comes from, from the meetings and, and that's where they decided, the governance committee decided to say, okay, let's work on this project like a sterilization or let's work on this project, the alcohol one. Um, so it, it's, it's coming from, from the top that they want to to work on a specific project. One question, Enrique, about uh, just moving a little bit uh, the talking. Uh, you you tell me that the the cluster of automotive was there in, in Chihuahua. Yes, automotive cluster is in Chihuahua. Okay. Yes. And you know what company is there in that cluster? Uh, no, I, I spoke today to the director. Uh, she told me because there is going to be a medical device manufacturing summit in Anaheim in February. And this is the first time that the cluster is going to be there. 
So I called the director of the cluster and um, let, me, let me see if I have it here. She showed me her website and, and you have all the all the companies in the in the website. Let me see if I have it here and if not, I'll send it to to Orfield so he can share with you. Um, let's see. I'm asking Enrique because uh, I work uh, more than 15 years in, in a Japanese company called Yasaki. I don't know if you're familiar with that company. Sure. It's, and it's sure. automotive, an automotive component, um, actually. Uh -huh. But uh, I don't see a Japanese joining a cluster or is, or is, or is joining. Uh, Yasaki. He, or, or or Sumitomo or another Japanese company. I I I can't answer to you because I just saw the the, the website. Okay, it's Cluster Automotriz de Chihuahua. Right. If, if you go through the website Cluster Automotriz de Chihuahua, you will see the names there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Can you name some clusters in the United States and what industry they're involved in? Um, to be honest with you, I haven't go out of of what I mentioned at the beginning. Um, I I do this in 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 Mexico, um, but this. Uh, office in germany can help us to identify clusters in the united states i i can ask for that information Be because they're gonna be important partners for us thank you Any other question for Enrique? Not for me. Very good. Orfield is going to be very close to the cluster, so we can keep this communication, Orfield. Sure. Thank you very much for being our guest speaker this month, Enrique. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Enrique. You're my welcome. Very nice to meet you all. It's very nice. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Right. Everybody if later. Anybody, if thank anybody, you. That thank wants you, everyone. Their, thank anybody you. That wants their uh, recertification points, please make sure that you send the chat, giving your your name, your email, and your ASQ member number, and uh, we'll get that to. Uh, Morris for him to send out the certifications. Thank you. I did that. Four I... people have put in information. It'd be also good to have your section number. If you could add your section number. Okay, I will. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much. See you guys. I guess the uh, second Tuesday in next month. Yes, sir. Or first Tuesday, I should say, right? Yep. All right.